I've been hogging to a lot of materials, but now I'm finally going to do uh, Awaken Rachel. Alright, let's see. Should be able to one shot this one too. Right, done. Well, not yet. I always forget that he'll he has another life as a robot. have to do that but before we do that I think she benefits a lot from from that because she can now um, buff herself or even do the AOE so she yeah she's scary the waking all right let's do the last one I can't believe it's actually kind of hard I actually self buff myself. There we go. There we go. I think I should kill. Yeah, she's more dangerous.
They'll have to lose a unit. Alright, there we go. Actually, actually, this is my third attempt to clear this. It's actually hard. Okay, now here we go. So we're gonna take a look at the skill right now, Runic Void. So it's the AOE damage, damage to all enemies within a five block radius. So it's a five rounds cooldown. So which means it's the same as Arcane Blast. Arcane Blast does a little bit more damage, however, um, deals additional damage to mages and holy units. So this is very, uh, it's all already like so good. So I would probably have this and Arcane Blast. So we have two uh, effective AOE. It depends. Um, the mage is also very good because you, you do want to, sometimes you want to dispel. But only dispel one buff here. It deals good damage and also um, apply a magic, de magic defense reduction debuff. And then damage increases as you get closer to your target. So this I'm gonna show you guys later. So damage increase by 10% for every one block. So I'll show you guys how that works later. Because you can't choose a target. So your radius is the you know where they are in the danger zone. The radius where you they get attacked. So this is another attack on top of Runic Void. So this is a fixed damage. Stacks on the enemy. After taking action on your next turn, take fixed damage equal to Rachel's intelligence times 0 0.5. Can be stacked. So I don't know how this can be stacked really means. So I just assume that there's um, a lot of them, which I'm going to show you guys right now because I already did this. And again, this is my second time doing this video. Okay. So we're not gonna do any faction buff right now. I'm gonna see, show you guys the difference. So this as you can get closer when it's here, it deals more damage. So you can see it's kind of like um, what you might call it, um, heaven sanction. It just hits. So now I'm not gonna do. Let me show you guys. So my intelligence is one point one thousand one hundred forty without faction buff. So this is applied. So I don't know if the stack is actually this can be stacked kind of thing, but I think this is actually um what you would call it. So this does one damage and this does more. And so on every turn I'll do, do more damage. So anyways, I'm not gonna do faction buff and I'm gonna show you guys how it works. So that AoE hits and then now it's gonna apply the faction buff. Not the fashion buff, sorry, the fixed damage. Okay, she's dead. I can see seven five two times five times. And of course you can dispel that. So PvP it's very good, because there's five of them you have to dispel. Same situation. It did the exact same damage because of the range. But this time I'm gonna do Faction buff after the runic void. So now her intelligence is 1319. So we're gonna see if the attack, the fixed damage is the same. Now 
no difference. It's still 752. Alright, so now we want to see if it actually stacks. It's going to do extra damage more than the first turn. Well, you can't tell from him, but you can tell from the assassin here. It's the same. So this time there's no crit, so... Fixed damage wise the same. Now last but not least, we're going to do faction buff first. And it should obviously be more damage. Even the AoE itself, AoE itself, and the fixed damage itself. So obviously, way more damage. So it's seven five two, and it's still seven five two. So I don't understand. So is it her base? So I'm also not too sure what it means by can be stacked. So so far the fixed damage has been the same and well I'm, I still don't understand. Maybe the translation is wrong. I'm not too sure. Um, I know that damage is increased by 10% when it's closer. So that's one thing I'm sure. and. Um, no, thanks to my guildmate, he actually reminded me that her and Bozo combo is especially good in PvP. Because when Bozo casts a AoE because of this, so for his faction buff, grants the buff and battle against enemies with more than 3 debuff. So if you apply with Rachel automatically, that's 5. So plus this, then your AoE is going to be insane. It deals so much damage. and. You Bozo alone with this equipment here, and with this, and with this, you're applying like another four to five debuffs. So there's so many um, debuffs applied on an opponent, on a target, and it's extremely hard to um, dispel. And that is it. And of course, you can kill with her um, fixed damage, unlike um, Luna's. Faction buff where it doesn't kill, just lower them to their lowest HP. And other than that, I hope this time I actually you no know, broke it down a little bit more clearly for you guys. And honestly, I think these two combo it's actually insane. I don't know if anyone uses clock on Rachel, but uh, I don't recommend. If you do have clock, you can just keep spamming it, it's crazy. Maybe, I don't know if the meta would change a little bit if you have clock on, but anyway, so that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.